Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV Week. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Bob Henson of Terrasat. Bob, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Now you have a lot of experience in the satellite sector. What's your take on the changes that are taking place? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. There's uh, been a number of, uh, I think, of really positive changes for the industry over over the year, over the years, with uh, new satellite constellations coming online, new technologies, so it's an innovation way of, uh, of for the market to get kickstarted. And I, I've seen, you know, the prices of bandwidth are coming down in general on uh, on regular um, geo satellites, which is helping customers buy more bandwidth to do more applications, which is good from a buck salesperson because they require higher power. So we're seeing a lot of requirements from low data up to higher speed data for airborne, aeronautical, uh, maritime, uh, government. Um, everything is just exploding for, for, for the use of bandwidth. So it's very good for that side. Now you mentioned maritime. Now with regard terminals for the maritime sector, the intelligent terminals, why is that an advantage? Uh, it's an advantage um, because there used to be seven or eight terminals on, on a cruise ship. Now, uh, which uh, companies like Cobham and Intellion are doing, are having a tri-band terminal built in. So now it's, the intelligence is, is able to move a feed from C-band to KU-band to KA, and then we supply the bucks, the three different bands, so they can have uh, all this bandwidth from one terminal. So it's, it's, very, it's very economical from the, from the space standpoint uh, on a cruise ship. And uh, the intelligence side is every, every person on a cruise ship now has an average of four devices that need connectivity. So times 5,000 passengers and crew, that's a lot of data that the cruise ship, so it's more and more data, more and more requirements, which means higher speed modems, network platforms, bigger antennas, and bucks. So it's, it's helping the industry grow in that realm as well. Now, with regards to manufacturing, I understand that you're putting GAN technology into your BUC models. Why? Um, GAN has a, a number of advantages uh, for the marketplace for products. Uh, GAN devices are um, take less less energy consumption, so you can actually have a smaller package in your in your BUC. Um, so it's very efficient when you're putting it for using it for DC or solar uh, type environments, or you have a, a small antenna where you need a smaller size buck to, uh, to do the application. There, um, there is a couple disadvantages with, with uh, GAN versus gas, traditional bucks, is they're not as linear. And so it's a, you have to have a, a, a it's, it's, the, it's the right application. Multi-carrier is not the best fan for GAN technology because of the, the way the linear curve um, is for the GAN devices. But there's, there's many advantages and disadvantages. So there's no replacement for GAN to gas. It just depends on the application and the size of the product. Now, in 2017, you introduced a new microprocessor and MNC interface. Explain a little bit about what that does and, and why you did it. Well, um, Terrasat's claim to fame initially was to make an intelligent buck, the iBuck. And it was the first buck that had a full-blown uh, uh, monitoring control interface into the buck. And for most applications um, in the world, traditionally for TDMA, they required what we would call a dumb buck. It just turned on and turned off, and that was it. As you get into more military-type applications, air traffic control, maritime, oil and gas, or unmanned locations, you need a monitoring control that can talk to the modem, talk to the antenna, and have uh, through uh, just regular um, RJ45 uh, MNC, you can now have connectivity into a full-blown MNC. So our new microprocessor allows for greater uh, logging of information in the bucks. So you can go through 30 days and have over two 20,000 events. So you can see what's going on within the radome, the ambient temperature inside the buck, and it gives much better reporting for the operator to their customers. So looking forward, what does the future hold for Terrasat? What are your plans? Well, we, uh, we see a lot of demand in KA with new constellations coming on board. Um, KA is an accepted technology where KU was to C-band many years ago, so KA is coming on, and, uh, which means uh, a whole new breed of antennas, bucks, which we're a big part of. And um, we see a lot of higher power 
applications. Again, with GAN technology, you can do very, very powerful bucks in a smaller packages, which may be replacing TWTs, TWTAs, and SSPAs. So it's an exciting time for the traditional buck manufacturers uh, into the marketplace. Bob, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you.